How many people brought your Bibles or your iPads or your telephones or whatever? Good. How many of you get my pardon the letter here? Hold your hand up. Look at the people, my God. Well, thank you. We have been preaching on the theme that God gave me. I write 12 pardon the letters on if you keep the faith, everything is yours. Everything. Don't complicate that. Children are born believers until you teach them the doubt. You're not God's adults. Yes, you grow to the fullness of the stature of Christ. You are God's children. My daughter's 51 years old. I ate lunch with her today before I came here. Before I'm concerned, she's still my little girl. I can see it. I'll always be God's child, even though you grow to the fullness of the stature of Christ. Go with me to the book of 2 Timothy chapter 4. I want to do a little piece on this, um, if you keep the faith. 2 Timothy is right past 1 Timothy. For you people that don't read the Bible. I want to start reading with verse 1 of 2 Timothy chapter 4, verse 1. Paul writing to the church, or actually writing to Timothy. Now, this is the most amazing thing to me. Why didn't they write him? This guy's in jail. They're going to cut his head off. Yet he's writing encouraging letters to Timothy and Titus. And he asked somebody to bring a coat to him because he was cold. Triumphers got on a ship and went 1,500 miles to bring that man a coat. And yet Paul had established a church 50 miles away and it didn't help him. That's sad, isn't it? He says this. Now, notice he was writing encouraging letters. Most people wouldn't in jail. They'd be saying, oh God, you've forgotten me. You've forsaken me. Not Paul. He says this to Timothy. He's protegeating verse one. I like the old King James Version. I charge thee therefore before God and the Lord Jesus Christ, who shall judge the quick and the dead at his appearing in his kingdom. Preach the word, which means don't preach your opinions. Amen. Opinions are transitory forms of thought. They float on the ocean of life. They change with every wave. I'm not interested in people's, I could care less about people's opinions. I want to know their convictions. What makes a person is their conviction, not their opinion. Then you find out who they really are, their convictions. Kathy got mad at me the other day. I said, if I want your opinion, I'll give you mine. <laughs> Look at the women. <laughs> I said, exactly what she said. <laughs> I said, it was a joke. It ain't funny. I, said, I thought it was, Charles. I thought it was an excellent thought myself. But, you know. <laughs> Preach the word. Be instant in season and out of season. Sometimes you're going to preach out of season. Sometimes you're going to not want to preach. Sometimes God's going to make you say something you don't want to say. That's the out of season time. Reprove. No, man, I don't like doing that. Rebuke. I'd rather encourage, but that's part of the scripture. Exhort with all long suffering and doctrine. For the time will come when they will not endure sound doctrine. That's happening today. What is sound doctrine? Tithing. Well, I lost a few of you right there, didn't I? <laughs> well, we don't have to tithe. Let me help you. You don't even have to get saved. You can go to hell if you want. You don't have to do nothing. God gave you free will. It's all your choice. What well, tithing's under the law. I was t telling Charles and Isaac, oh, it is. Oh, so you think it is. Oh, well, you know, where you get that at? You get that in Malachi 3. Let me answer the God. I said, will a man rob God? Let me answer that question. Yes. Steal from him in a second. How have you robbed me? Now, this is he's talking to preachers. He said, you've robbed me in tithe and offerings. Uh-oh. That tithing's under the law, but what about the offering? How come they're taking offerings? Answer me. You can't. Shocking in there. They just think the tithe. Wait a minute. How have you robbed me in tithe and offering? You can't separate the two. So if tithe is under the law, so was offerings. Wow. Man, ain't nobody want to hear that, huh? <laughs> How else do you put God first? Yeah. Think about it. You get a check and you say, Lord, oh, here's your money. It's not about money. Everybody thinks it is. It's about obedience. Yeah. You want me to prove it to you? That tithing is not about money? Because the Lord's never changed the rate. 
Now, if it was about money, he'd change the rate. Your mortgage company changed the rate. Your charge card, MasterCard, they changed the rate. The, the interest on your car, they changed the rate. God ain't never changed the rate because it's not about money. It's about obedience, tithe, and offering. Now, I, pay, I receive tithe at our church, naturally, and, and I receive offering. And if you want to know if it's in the New Testament, that Hebrews chapter 7, go read the thing. It's right there. And they'll say, no, 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 you know, no, no. See, if it's time that, look, look, if you really believe something, just shut it all down. If it's tithing on them, then they'll never receive another offer. And I promise you in two weeks, they'll say, and we're going back to tithing. <laughs> I'm not being critical here. I'm being truthful. Anytime somebody tells you not to give to God, something wrong with that. And on your best day, you cannot impress God with your giving. He's El Shaddai. Do you understand? And my God, you know, I don't believe in that prosperity stuff. Then why you work? Why you have a house? Why you have a car? What's the matter with you? Why don't you live on the bridge? Like one man told me, but Jesse, I don't want to be debt free. I said, the homeless are debt free. Takes a while in Tennessee. Let me go over here. <laughs> the homeless is debt free. That ain't nothing to be debt free. Why don't you believe to be debt free in the amount of money you're in debt? Which means your house, your car, whatever you got. Have that in liquid finance in the bank somewhere. Now you're believing something. Now you're understanding something, see. If you keep the faith, everything is yours. Let me get to the scripture. And I love verse 7. He says, I have fought a good fight. I have finished my course. And I have kept the faith, which means if you don't keep it, you can lose it. We need to become faith keepers. Faith keepers. That's why I love this church. I think this church's name is the best name of any church in the world. And I'm not saying that because I've been, know, I've been knowing this man for many years. Faith is the victory. That's better than Second Baptist. And I'm not being critical, that's the truth, huh? Where you go to church? The second man, well, why not first? Well, I don't know, we just was second. <laughs> now, I'm not being critical of the Baptist. I love the Baptist. I preach in Baptist churches. Not, I've been asked to preach in, in, in the Southern Conventions and things, years ago. He said, I fought a good fight. I finished my course. I've kept the faith, which means if you don't keep it, you can lose it. Yeah. Faith keepers. Write this down if you're taking notes. Your faith is full of motion and energy. It deserves the passion of your belief. Your faith is full of motion and energy. Faith moves all the time and has energy in it. It deserves the passion of your belief. Why do you talk about faith so much? That's how I got saved. That's how come you came tonight? Because I wasn't in the room of your five senses. You couldn't see me, you couldn't hear me, you couldn't touch me, you couldn't smell me. I was not in the room of your finances, uh, uh, excuse me, your, 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 where you could see me. And, and, your, no, but you came. Why? Because your faith moved you to come. And you had passion enough to believe it. See, if you keep the faith, everything, that's spiritual, physical, and financial, every hour, his will be done where? 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 As it is where? Why would you criticize me for prosperity? What are you going to do when you get to heaven? You can't find a trailer. You can't find a used car. You can't find a broke down house. In my father's house, I'm in what? Whoa! His will be done where? How come you're not living in a mansion here? How come you're not? I'll tell you why you're not. It's not your fault. The church won't let you. They'll criticize you for that. The secular world will eat your lunch over that. Yet if poverty is so wonderful, how come everybody trying to get out? Hmm. Your faith is full of motion and energy. It deserves the passion of your belief. See, faith is not the work of a moment, but of a lifetime. Surrendering to faith deepens within us. Every day I enhance my faith because it deepens within me. Faith is not the work of a moment, but of a lifetime. Surrendering to faith deepens within us. I just love living by faith. How else can you live anywhere else? 
Why would you want to do anything else? You ever notice why I don't preach much on suffering? You ever notice that? You ever heard me go, huh? Oh. You know why? I ain't suffering. The Bible said it's better to obey than to sacrifice. We know a lot about sacrifice, don't we? Do we know a lot about just beat me, Jesus? Just beat me. No, I don't want to beat you. Just hit me hard, Jesus. No, but we don't know much about obedience. You would never discipline your child if they just believe what you said. If children would go to bed, would you tell them to go to bed? But no, you know kids can't sleep unless they've been beat twice. You see it happen over the years. Don't make me come up there. I'm going to kill every one of you. They know you lying. They know you lying. You ain't going to kill them. Because you know how your husband is? Oh, well, we'll make another one, mama. No. <laughs> Trying to get rid of these two. Faith is not the work of a moment, but of a lifetime. Surrendering the faith deepens within us. Every day of my life, I draw farther and farther away from doubt. Farther and farther away from sickness, disease, poverty, discouragement, despondency. You got depression problems? I can help you. I'll dump a load of joy in your life like you ain't never seen. People always singing that song. Ain't no sunshine when she gone. Well, I know, 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 I know. We had the best music ever, my generation. <laughs> didn't we? Didn't we have the best? When a man loves a woman, come on, baby, let's just dance a little bit. <laughs> Oh, yeah, y'all Pentecostals, y'all don't believe in dancing. <laughs> See, when you understand spiritual insight, it is a motivator. Spiritual insight is a powerful motivator, which makes you get up and do something. It's a, it's a, let me show you something. Peter sees Jesus walking over. He don't know it's Jesus. You think he would know Jesus, huh? You think. Oh, they all freak out on the boat. Whoa, it's a ghost. But you know, Peter, pretty brave guy. He said, if that's you, Jesus, bid me to come. Jesus said, come. He wasn't believing it was Jesus. He didn't know who he was. He gets out of the boat and starts walking in fear. He's walking on top of the water in fear. Why? because his eyes is focused on Jesus. He's stepping over waves. Finally, when he gets to him, he takes his, Isaac, he takes his eyes off of Jesus. He starts looking at the winds and the way. Who? He starts sinking. Help me, Lord. See, <laughs> I've seen faith will make you walk on the water even if you're in fear. If you focused on Jesus, you focus on your priority, you eliminate your confusion. Amen. Did you get that? Do you understand what I'm saying? He is in fear. He don't know who it is. He said, Lord, save me. And when Jesus grabs him, he's right as close as I am to this pulpit. He said, why'd you doubt? What's your problem, boy? You just got here. I'm this close to you, man. How close Jesus has been to you when you started sinking? Hmm. If you keep the faith. Everything is yours. You see, let me just say it again. Spiritual insight is a powerful motivator, which makes you get, you get up and do something. And Peter started walking. Because see, if you stay in the boat religion, you're only going to meet disciples. But you get out on that water, you're going to meet Jesus. He's not in the boat, ladies and gentlemen. He's on the water. Everything around you in the boat is over your head. Everything around Jesus is under his feet. Where you want to be? Never eat the bread of idleness. Write that down. Never eat the bread of idleness. When God says, what God says is not a suggestion, but a command and a responsibility. I don't eat the bread of idleness. Let me give you a prime example. When God created the Garden of Eden, Isaac, he didn't finish it. It wasn't right, sweetheart, until man put his hand on it. He didn't finish it. He told Adam, Andy, dress it and 
keep it. Because if you don't keep it, you can lose it. And they didn't keep it, he lost it. It wasn't perfect till mankind put his hand on the creation of God Almighty. He said, now dress it. When I, I never forget when I first saw Jody, my daughter, I only have one daughter, one granddaughter. Oh my God. October 25th, 1206 AM. Born naked. <laughs> you know what's the first thing I did? I was a hippie, man. I, I was a heathen from hell, head on the hill long. My God, because that was, it just turned 12 o'clock, 12.06. As soon as the store was open, I went down there and bought the prettiest dress. i never forget them nurses. Said, How can this hippie-looking fool have such nice taste? I bought this beautiful dress. You know what I did? I dressed her. Ah, and I've been dressing her ever since. <laughs> and I kept her. And when she married, I said, Jody, Ed, I'll never put my nose in your business. I'm your father. I said, Ed, I like you, but you don't, want me, you don't want me to become your enemy. Do you understand what I'm talking about? Now, y'all gonna get mad at each other, but there's some things I'm not sanctified in. You don't hit this girl, because if you do, I'm gonna make an offer you can't refuse. <laughs> and you think I'm kidding you? I'll take your kneecaps off slow. Kathy goes, whoa. I was honest. <laughs> That's my daughter. Walk out the house. You don't hit her. You got that? That's all I'm ever going to say. Now, you, <laughs> you got to understand. I was raised with the La Cosa Nostra, with the mafia in New Orleans. I was raised in the Sicilian neighborhood. Where's Fred? Uh, that's what the Mississippi River's for. You're laughing, but that was truth. And we thought that was normal. You don't think we were blind. Hmm. You never eat the bread of idols. I don't have time. Have you ever saw me sick? You know why? I don't have any more faith in you. I just didn't have time. Virus is trying to catch me. The boy would just slow down. You know what I'm saying? Just keep going, man. People say, are you going to retire? Do I look tired? I mean, I could retire. I could have retired 20, 25 years ago. Me and Kathy go to Hawaii and suffer for Jesus. I don't have time for that. Never eat the bread of idleness. What God says is not a suggestion but a command. Adam, dress it and keep it. God didn't even name the animals. Man had to get his hand on God's creation. And God said, let us make man. Angel said, what's a man? They never seen that before. Think about that. He didn't dress, he didn't keep it. Now, you got to understand something about women. <laughs> women are, ve are really are more sensitive than men because, you see, women started developing their solar shrimp before man ever did. Adam never once looked at the tree of life. He never once looked at the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. He's looking at Eve. <laughs> That's all he interested in. What's up, Eve? He got his lean on. How you doing, Eve? Hey, how you doing, Eve? Woo! Look at the men. Yeah, man, I understand, man. He wasn't eating the bread of idleness. Eve was looking at the tree when she wasn't supposed to because it was pretty, pleasant to look at. That's the soap with shrimp. Women like pretty things. He's just looking at Eve. He did not keep his job. Do you know when Eve ate that fruit, sin did not fall? Not because she was a lesser species. He created male and female, created he them, not him. Them, not him. He called them Adam. Adam called Eve Eve. God called Eve Adam. 
Think about that for a minute. He didn't do his job. He should have told that snake, shut your mouth and get out of here. I'm in control here. He's talking to my wife. But when he ate that fruit, sin fell. Not that he was better. Because he had a job to do that he didn't do. Shout, ladies, I just set you free. <laughs> what made her look at it? The bread of idleness. If she'd have been around the business of dressing it and keeping it. Mm. And if Adam would have looked at what he, God put him in instead of just looking at the woman. Write this down. This is a very powerful point. Don't be so ready to rest your faith on what is going to be. If you put your faith in the future, that overstrains your emotions. Don't be so ready to rest your faith on what is going to be. Faith is not made for the future, even though it can create a future. Faith was made for the now. Now faith is. Not tomorrow, not now. Now. But we tend to say, well, when the Lord get ready, he's been ready since the Garden of Eden. All we got to do is receive it. See, and when you put that out there, you overstrain your emotions. That's why a lot of missionary kids don't live for God because their parents didn't understand. Their parents should have made their children fall in love with God. But he said, you got to suffer, 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 suffer. So after a while, well, how come this God is so good? How come we can't, we don't have nothing? They canonize poverty. Why would you do that? Now, we all suffer things. Don't misunderstand me. I understand that, but you don't have to go through all this. Jesus had suffered the children. He didn't say, hurt me. The word suffer, that means permit the children to come unto me. For such is the kingdom of God. Or the kingdom of heaven. So when you understand, that overstrains your emotions. I don't like to wait. Do you like to wait? When you want a new dress, girls, when you want it? When you want a Louis Vuitton. First, when do you want it? Chanel. Escada. Givenchy. Gucci. Christian Dior. That's not tongues. That's money I'm talking about here. I'm talking big money here. Look at your husband. He ain't said one word. He, uh. And the reason why you hadn't got it, he's eating the bread of idleness. Look at him, women. <laughs> Don't be so ready to rest your faith on what is going to be. It overstrains your emotions. You know what that does? That boggles down your mind with small thoughts. Don't boggle your mind with small thoughts. Expand the way you think. Expand the way you think about yourself. Accept greater revelations and fresh anointings. I call that mental production. That's Genesis chapter 1 verse 26. Go read it. Let me say it again. Don't boggle your mind down with small thoughts. Expand the way you think about yourself. Accept greater revelations and fresh anointings. It's called mental production. You see, that's what, what, the reason why Abraham was able to do what he did, he got into mental production. He kept telling God, I'm an old man. God didn't talk to him for 14 years because he made a mistake. 14 years. And then he can't have a baby. I mean, it ain't happening. Sarah then passed menopause. He ain't, ain't menopause no more. He ain't, he ain't, the word pause is gone. <laughs> He's a hundred years old. And God said, Abraham, I'm going to expand your way of thinking. Sarah's going to get pregnant. Huh? <laughs> Have you seen Sarah lately, Jesus? <laughs> I know you can do miracles, but that's a big one. Through Sarah will all the nations of the world be blessed. You think God was concerned that she's 90 years old? You think he's concerned that Abraham is 100? Sex is no longer a part of their life. It's a thought. Memories. <laughs> I've heard people say that. I hadn't got there yet, so I don't know. <laughs> Am I shocking you? <laughs> Fine lies. <laughs> 
Don't let that white hair fool you. <laughs> I'm getting out of town tonight. I'm going. <laughs> Kathy's probably watching. I'm going to kill that man when he gets home. I don't boggle my mind with that thought. And you know how he did it? He considered not. He didn't deny it. He staggered not. A man that staggers falls down. And he was fully persuaded. He went past believing. Now he knows in whom he has believed. And Isaac, which means laughter, was born. Boy, did he get healed. Sarah dies, but he ain't finished yet. He marries a girl named Katura. I think we had five or six more kids. You better eat your Wheaties. <laughs> this is the breakfast of champions here, buddy. <laughs> See, if you keep the faith, everything is yours. Spiritual, physical, and financial. See, your inward vision will tell you what to do. Take ownership of your faith. Your inward vision, that's who you really are. It's the person on the inside is who you really are. See, when you activate your obedience, you make a, a commandment to yourself to keep the faith. I've just made up my mind, I'm gonna keep the faith. People ask me all the time, how can you fly? Well, I don't normally tell people this. It cost me $121,000 to do that tour. I never charged a person a dime. I don't give anybody. I didn't even receive an offering. I'm not bragging about that. I believe in offerings. You know why? I like them. <laughs> because you live in an economic world. It's not about money. It's living in this world. Just takes it. But if money is so bad, that money bad, but well, if it's so bad, how come you have a hard time giving it away? Now, you know, if it's something bad, you give it away. If you eat something bad, you spit it out. So money must not be bad because you retire on it. You take your wife out to dinner on it. It's not bad. It's when you fall in love with it and you make it your source. Ah, he'll not have any other God before him. Do you see that? So when you understand that, if you keep the faith, everything, Paul said he's about ready to die. He said, finally, I can get out of here. He'd been trying to leave. He said, but for your sake, I got to stay here. He'd been wanting to die for years. But revelation had to come. You see, I do, write this down, never adapt your faith to circumstances. Be spirit-led, loyal to God and your vision. Be loyal to your vision. And you want to read the scriptures, that's James chapter 2, verses 20 through 26. See, we have a great fo foe. We have a great foe, but we have a greater friend. Devil's a great foe, but oh, God's a greater friend. He said, I call you friends. I'm not embarrassed to go before God. I don't struggle with that whatsoever at all. I just, I just, I, I, I'm his child. Jody don't think twice to come to my house, open up my refrigerator, eat what she wants. She's 51 years old. She don't ask. She says, go get it. Why? Because my house is her house. She's got a key to my house. I don't have a key to her house. <laughs> How did that happen? I finally got one the other day. I said, you know, if something goes on, can I get a key to your house? Oh, yeah, Dad, just never, because as far as she's concerned, she, everything I got belongs to her. I only have one daughter, one granddaughter. That's it. You see what I'm saying? She, you, we have a great foe, but we have a greater friend. When we eat dinner, I pay. Why? I'm the father. I never run out. I'm shocking you. You should never run out. Ephesians 5, verse 1. You want me to prove it to you? Be ye therefore imitators of God as dear children? You, know, you ready for this? Did Jesus ever have a financial deficit? No. Peter did. The apostle Paul did. The apostle John did. I say, the apostle Jude, Titus. Why? Why would they have financial deficits? <laughs> they know how to give, but they don't know how to receive. I'll prove it to you. Want me to prove it to you? God trying to bless Paul. I mean, in my opinion, this is my opinion. I'm going to give you my opinion. To me, the Apostle Paul is the greatest intellectual mind ever drawn to the 
realm of Christianity. This man was brilliant. God wanted to bless him. They wanted to bless him with an offering. He goes, I work with my hands. I make tents. Well, that's good. He didn't know how to receive. But in the next epistle, he changes it and corrects it. He said, I did you a disservice because I did not receive from you. But now I have received from Ephroditus the things you sent me. I'm full. I have all and I abound. Jesus was a receiver, not a taker. Got to watch these takers. I mean, that lady broke that alabaster box and put that on his feet. That made Judas mad, but that made Peter mad too. Go read it. There's something mad about that. I love what Jesus said. You want the original language? Shut up. <laughs> Leave her alone. That's mine. That's exactly what he said. He knew how to receive. Do you know how to receive? Mm. Mm. Most people think they do, but they don't. Because you see, they put a limit on it. When you serve the God of unlimited, watch this. Jesus never had a financial deficit. So you know what? I made up my mind when I read that. Remember, I never learned a doubt. I have no doubt in me at all. I, in 47 years of preaching this gospel, I have never had a financial deficit. How many years I've been preaching? You know, quite a few. I can't remember. Now. Have I ever said, would you pay this? I got to fight Charles to try to buy a meal for him. I said, come on, Charles. No, no, no. I said, well, I said no, no. Anyway, he's been such, I mean, so been so kind. Let me just be a blessing. Why? I didn't believe for it. Don't complicate that. I saw some of you go, so you're complicating this. This is so simple. You need a good theologian to help you misunderstand the Bible. Jack your brain up, man. He give it to you the Baptist way, the Episcopal way, the Catholic way, the Word of Faith way, the Assembly of God way, the Church of God way, the Church of Christ way. Can you imagine to the Oriental mind, we all serve the same God. I come, we got so many different names. That's confusing. We're one body made up of many members. I was on TBN one time and I had to correct them. Oh. They asked me, Brother Jesse, what camp you in? Oh, God. I said, um, I might have to rephrase your question. There's no, listen to me. There's only one camp of God, but there's many different colored tents. Now, which tent you in? Twelve tribes, all different. One nation, Israel. You see, you never adapt your faith to circumstances. I've had many opportunities to fail. I just don't take any. See, keeping the faith includes keeping your priorities straight. Let me close with this. There's so much I could talk about it. I keep my priorities straight. I said, I'm going to follow this Jesus. Who do you think you are? Oh, they think it's cockiness and arrogance. Oh, there was times I ran out of gas on the road. They stole my offerings when I first started back 47 years ago. You ever had an offering stole from you, Isaac? Tell the truth. You, you, you know, yeah, one time. Oh, man, I had a bunch of out in Alabama known for that. <laughs> I, yeah, I've been in Alabama a lot. Of days. I'm not being critical, just being truthful. Yeah. I'm not being critical, just being truthful. Steal your offerings. Run out of gas. 2.30 in the morning, still got 200 miles to drive. They didn't feed me for a week. They put me in an evangelistic quarters, but it was 28 degrees inside the, the room. Bauxite, Arkansas. <laughs> I said, can I put the heat on? Well, that would raise up the rate, uh, the utility, and we can't afford that. I had a run in place most of the time of the night. 28 degrees inside the room. I'm not lying. One lady, I preached five days. She gave me 10 bucks. I didn't have no money in them days. So I gave her my money. She said, if you go to Popeye's and buy a Coke, they give you a free biscuit. <laughs> True story. <laughs> Yet I've never had a financial deficit. Run out and I said, well, hello, Lord. I don't care. I'll fast. 
you call me to preach this gospel. And all of a sudden, here comes somebody down the road. Some were angels. I'll never forget that. One time I ran out of gas in front of a gas station. Boom, 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 boom. And a man came in and he had a pickup, brown pickup truck. I'll never forget it. I was 28 years old. I'm going to be 74 next month, July tonight. He said, how you doing, young man? You heard me crunching stuff. You might have heard that story. I hadn't eaten a week. He wouldn't feed me. You got to endure hardness as a good soldier. Okay. I never said a word. They were throwing away the popcorn. There was just a little bit left in the bottom of the popcorn. It was, it was like a 7-Eleven store, convenience store. I said, you're going to throw it away? Can I have it? I said, uh, you want to eat this? I said, yeah, I'll eat anything right now. So he gave it to me. I went outside, I'm, I'm crunching them things. And some of them were kind of half pop, you know what I mean? You know? Oh, man, I thought, God, man, I hadn't eaten five days. See, everybody, I don't want to criticize me about them jets. They don't know about them days. See, they don't know anything about that, see. That's when that man pulled up in that truck. And I, he said, go ahead and fill your, fill your car up, young man. I said, I didn't want to tell him I had no money. I said, no, sir, go ahead, you do the thing. He said, no, no, you were here before me. It's 2.30 in the morning. I got to hitchhike 200 miles. I'm going to push this car over there and do what I can. I ain't, I ain't got a dime on me. He said, no, fear you. No, and the, the man come out of the convenience store. He said, hey, young man, I found a whole bag of popcorn. You want that? I said, yeah. <laughs> this wasn't the, it wasn't the season. He said, you want? I said, yeah, man. Man, I'm in, I'm in grab, man. <laughs> I mean, I'm hungry, you know. So, and the man looked at me and said, young man, what do you do? It's 2.30 in the morning. I didn't want to tell him I'm a preacher. He said, what do you do? I said, uh, I'm a preacher. You're a preacher? Where you preach at? And I told him the town I'd come out of. He said, that's where I live. What church did you preach at? Exact words. And I told him the church. He said, my wife didn't want me to go to that church. He said, they didn't give you an offering? So evidently he knew something about church, I guess. Because, you, know, you know, most people don't go to church. They don't know nothing about offerings, you know. I said, well, no. He said, you mean to tell me? How long did you preach? I said, well, I did Sunday, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, and Friday. He said, well, did they pick up you an offering? And I'm, I'm trying, I'm embarrassed. I'm trying to. And I said, well, yeah. He said, well, they didn't give it to you? He goes, son of a. <laughs> I stopped. He start cussing. Them blankety blanks, no good trashy blankety blanks. I can't believe them blankety blanks and I'm just looking at him like that, you know. Them crazy. He said, boy, fill your car up with gas. I'm going to pay for it. Go in that. Oh, touch my heart when I think about that. Whew. Go in that convenience store and get you some bread and some ham and some, make you a sandwich and get some potatoes. And get anything you want. I'm paying out them blankety blank, no good trashy blankety blank. And you know what I thought? He's a cussing angel. He's a cussing angel. That boy cussing up a storm. He gave me, I think it was 400 or $700. I ain't never had that much money in offer in my life. He said, don't you ever stop preaching, young man. Them blankety blank, no good trash. <laughs> you fill in the blanks. That's a true story. Touching my heart when I think. I, mean, I came back in that car and it made me a, some, y'all remember bologna? Well, bologna, I, love, still, I still like bologna, you know. And, and, I'm, and I'm driving home. A sinner helped me. because a Christian wouldn't. Why, Jesse? I kept the faith. I just, just decided to fast. I said, devil, I ain't stopping. I didn't adapt my faith to that circumstance. Mister, I've been trying to find you for 47, 40, 76, 
45 years. That's 1978. I can help you. I can buy you a truck. I can do it now, baby. I can buy you a house. Because you help me. God honored me. Because I refused to adapt my faith to circumstance and I kept my priorities straight. You know, you, it's, it's called staying in sync with the Holy Spirit. What would I have me to do? Our life is one long journey of faith, but it's a good journey. That's just some of this. I mean, I, I, I hope you could, if you're a partner, you know I've been writing different things on if you keep the faith. That's spiritual, physical, and financial. People say, think it's spiritual. No, it's physical and financial. I got to watch what I say today because I get it. I just flat get it. And people can't get over that. How does he do that? I'm not, I mean, I have some of the biggest preachers in the world. If I named them, you would know them. You would know them. How do you do that, Brother Jesse? I said, I don't. God does. I just keep the faith. He didn't ask me to pay for it. He asked me to believe for it. My wife told me this the other day, you a machine. I swear. She said, Jesse, you're not tired. I said, well, Kathy, if you notice I was doing all the preaching and you were doing all the sleeping. <laughs> she said, I got to go to bed. I said, woman, I'm the one that did all the preaching. <laughs> but we got home and seven hours ahead of you, so your body's doing this. Five, Kathy went to bed at 5.15 p.m. Man, I'm on treadmill running, doing everything, keeping that, you know, doing everything I do at the house. And I, I went to bed about, actually, that was early for me, 8 o'clock. And I slept till 4.30 in the morning. That's eight and a half hours. I got up, I was ready to go. And there she is. <laughs> you know, as you get older, you make noises. <laughs> I don't ever remember Kathy snoring. No. Never noises. You make all kind of noises after you get old. Or a little older anyway, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> She said, you know, Jess, I always had your back. I said, yeah, but you had a knife in your hand. <laughs> she said, shut up, Jess. I said, I said, I thought that was funny too. That ain't funny. I said, okay, I just thought it was funny. I am a trip to live with. She's turned into a great preacher. Lord Jesus, man. She had been shucking corn. We call that shucking corn and balling the potatoes, boy. She's shucking that corn, boy. I told her the other day, you don't need me. Don't you ever say that, okay? I said, you can handle this with your eyes closed. Some of you said women are not allowed to preach. Come to my house. She'll convince you, baby. I'll tell you something about a woman. When a woman is strong, Adam gave up the garden and God for Eve. He did, shouldn't have, but he did. But I like what God did. You know what he said? If they can't live in this garden, I'm not gonna live in this garden. So he went out amongst them. He walked out the garden too, took it up to heaven, and he walked with man. See, God wants to be with you if you keep the faith. Be a faith keeper. Faith keepers do that. Faith is the victory. It's not faith, it's a shot in the dark. Wouldn't that be a name of a church? Faith is a shot in the dark. <laughs> faith, sometimes he does and sometimes he don't. Faith works sometimes. It always works. Constantly. It got you here today. It'll get you where you're going tomorrow. We had a miracle today. Because there's supposed to be some real bad weather here. We, come, we flew in the, what's the name of that? Uh, Toon, Toon, is that right? Uh, airport. Rain like crazy. When we got there, mm -hmm, like the Red Sea just opened up. We landed, mm -hmm. we taxed it like that. As soon as I got in the car, <laughs> here come the rain. 
It was starting to rain. <laughs> and my, my pilot said, Mom, Brother Jesse, it's amazing what God does. Yeah. Can I, can I say this and uh, close with it? I'm not amazed anymore. He's just that good. I just like to watch him. He said, what you doing? I said, I'm going to imitate you. He said, that's what I like about you, Jesse. He said, they persecuted me. I said, they persecuted me, me too, Lord. I said, but I'm on the same team. I said, we together. I, I prayed this morning. I said, Lord, let me always honor you in this life and, and in the eternity of eternities. He said, you will. I'm already asking, what's my job? We're not going to be laying on the ground and angels dropping grapes in our mouth. <laughs> right now, the universe is expanding faster than the speed of light. What's he doing still creating? I've been to heaven. People say, I don't believe it. I don't care. It didn't increase my faith, but it sure did increase my longing. I don't know what Jesus looks like. He put his hand on his shoulder. I've sat down with the Apostle Paul in his house. We've had great discussions. I talked to Jonah. Jonah was a great guy. I asked him about the fish. I'll just tell you. I said, how could you live in a fish for three days? I wanted to know that. I think inquiring minds want to know. <laughs> he said, you're focusing on the wrong thing. I went, you're focusing on the fish. You should be focusing on my disobedience. That's the exact words. That came from Jonah's mouth. He said, I was in disobedience, not in a fish. Even though I wasn't in a fish, that had nothing to do with it. I was in disobedience. I said, well, yeah, yeah, I got that. I got that. <laughs> I saw the Father God. I saw Jesus. And I asked the stupidest question anybody would ever ask in heaven. I said, where's the Holy Spirit? I know what the Trinity is. He said, he's on the earth. I said, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. No, I know. <laughs> so stupid I just did to see that power I don't have time to quit if you keep the faith that includes them heathen kids of yours <laughs> Bible said you got the promise of your family down to a thousand generations do you know that the promises of God, the promises of God are far more powerful than the sins of people? So deal with the promises. It'll cancel the sin out. That's what my mother told me. It's your tough luck, you little heathen from hell. You're going to get saved whether you like it or not because you were born to me. I said, woman, you done lost your ever-loving mind. That's right. I got the mind of Christ. You the one that's ignorant. That's what, that's what my mama told me, man. You know, women, boy, they didn't eat your lunch, you know. And she saw me preach the gospel before she went home to be with the Lord. She never thought she'd have a gangster son. She went, I didn't know this till on her deathbed. She said, you know, Jesse, I went in and I prayed, Lord, I want a preacher in my family. When y'all were little. The Lord said, I'll make Jesse. She said, oh, no, not Jesse. <laughs> Lord, we had to go to the school. He was selling protection. <laughs> well, yeah, I said, if somebody mess with you, I'll take care of everything. Cost you 50 cents a week. <laughs> I did that. I could get you anything. From a shirt to a lipstick. How'd you get that? Fell off the truck. <laughs> I'm serious. I'm not lying. It's just a crazy little gangster. Used to take a thermos to school. They thought it was Kool-Aid. It was slow gin. <laughs> Some things I can't tell you because the statute of limitation ain't run out. <laughs> one time, I'll tell you that one time a principal wanted to do something, put that gun to his head. I said, you gonna do what you gotta do? I could do anything I wanted when I was in school. Fear. I ain't big enough to whip nobody. But my grandfather says, you do what you got to do. Somebody mess with you. Alligators got to eat. <laughs> that was his famous statement. Alligator got to eat. Every time I see an alligator, I go, hmm. <laughs> Thank God. 
God, the Lord saved me. And here's the most amazing thing. This is my last closing. It's hard. Well, it's hard to quit faith at the victory. I, I just believe him. Even if it doesn't look right. So, you know, the, the devil told me today, you're not going to Nashville. That weather's terrible. You're not going to get there. I said, no, you're not going to Nashville. <laughs> he ain't here. He's getting rained on. <laughs> Give Jesus a hand clap for that. Before I pray for you, we're going to receive an offering for this ministry. It's such a good ministry. God. 47 years never having a financial deficit. We're totally debt free. The anointing of increase is on me greatly. And I wanted to come upon you. Ushers, would you pass out these offering envelopes? This is a Jesse the Planet's ministry offering envelope. I ask you to take one. You that are watching online, you can give too. I don't know if they have that stuff. Oh, yeah, they have. If you want to give online, I don't know how all this stuff works. If you want to give online, you can go to JDM website. That's JDM.org. You can use PayPal. You can text to give a one-time donation or a recurring one if you want. You can write a check tonight, payable to JDM. You can mail it or put it in this offering. Or you can go to the online mobile app. Uh, look at me. Don't give me anything that belongs to faith as the victory. You won't hear too many traveling preachers say that. We're on the same team here. But I'm going to take this money and I've asked the Lord for every dollar given to my ministry. Give me a soul into the kingdom. I am about the Father's business. I'm reaching people and I'm changing lives one soul at a time. If you need to offer an envelope, if you hand, they'll give you one. Now, I'm going to say something that most preachers would never say when they're about ready to receive an offering. Everybody look at me. If you don't want to give, don't. Please don't. Ever heard anybody say that? You know why? The Bible said if you're willing and obedient, you eat the good of the land. See, some people are willing, but they're not obedient. Now watch this. Some people are obedient, but they're not willing. It's the same thing. You cancel out your harvest. A seed always stays a seed, no matter if it's big or small, until it's sown. It will not produce nothing until it's sown. I ask you to do your best. I'm putting it toward the world event. I'm going to South Africa. I'm going to spend another couple of hundred grand. I'm going to put it to, I'm going to get people saved in South Africa, Joe Berg and New, New East. I'm, I'm just going. They say, he's flying. He don't even charge. No, I'm going to do it. So don't get mad at me. When you get to heaven, there'll be people from South Africa in your front yard. Hello. I made up my mind. You ever heard of Daniel Kalinda? You know, he took over Reinhardt Monkey's thing. He showed up in Beale, Switzerland. I said, you on the preaching? That? He said, Jesse, when we saw you on that, well, it's got to be good. Jesse's on it. I said, Daniel, I don't even know these people. Oh, what do you mean? I said, the Lord just told me to come. I don't, I don't know. They couldn't get over it. Another one, another uh, minister, Nathan, he's in Orlando, Florida. He's an evangelist. Great guy. I mean, they said, man, we can't because of you. I said, well, you need to come because God told you to come. I just go. And the pastor, they couldn't get over it. I'm not bragging about myself. I just made up my mind. I'll go where God tell me to go. Now, the anointing of increase is on me. You understand? People at our church are getting debt free so fast. They're freaking out how this happened. I've got businesses giving them my ministry. They say, We've never seen such. How did you do that? I said, It's on me. I ain't looking for money, but money is looking for me. How would you like people come up to you, shake your hand and put $100,000 in one hand here, 100000 in this hand here? Personal. I give it to the work of the Lord. I'm tell How would you like somebody to give you a paper bag with $60,000 in cash in it? I'm not once, many times. Give that to the work of the Lord. What am I going to do with it? I'm already taken care of. I'm telling you, how many of you would like that? Don't lie, lift your hand up. You should. I've had people, I walk in, they say, we're going to give you these shoes. We don't know why. 
I ain't talking about $2 pair of shoes. I'm talking 1100 bucks with the red soles. Blue Britain, is that right? I don't know the name of them shoes. Something. I said, no, no, I, I didn't ask. Well, they look good on you. We don't know why we're doing that. I said, neither do I. But give me my shoes. <laughs> That's what the Lord said. What do you want me to do? I didn't ask for them. I bought a car one time like that. I said, the Lord sent me here. He said, who sent you here? I said, this is the owner of the car dealer. I said, this is what the Lord said, and this is what he's going to pay for. He said, what are you going to pay for this car? He said, huh, well, God sure cuts a good deal. I said, he's Jewish. <laughs> no, I said, are you going to sell the car for that or are you going to go to hell? Which one are you going to do? <laughs> he said, I'm going to sell the car for that. I ain't going to hell over a car. I said, true story. <laughs> I'm telling you. If you're writing a check out, make it out to JDM, you'll get a tax deductible receipt for your giving. And let, let me say it again. Please don't give me anything that belongs to your church. We're all on the same team. And if you want to use that, you can use that if you like. JDM website, jdm.org or PayPal. I don't, I'll never do any of that. I, I'm still old-fashioned. You know? I just cut a check or cash or something like that. You can text to give if you like. You can go to an online mobile app. How many of you want the hundredfold? Come on, man. You don't want a hundred times. That's mathematics. Let's get radical, man. Believe the unbelievable, receive the impossible because it's doable. It's doable. Are you ready to give? Hold your offering up to the Lord. You gonna believe for the hundredfold? Some of you not. Some of you not. You're doing this. You ain't ready for me. You're not ready for me. I know that sounds strong. I'm trying to help you here. I'm not gonna touch it. This, this don't belong to me. Ain't nobody own a church. You understand what I'm saying? This belongs to God. Well, does he need it? No. Does he want it? Yes. Why? So he can bless you. That's all he wants to do is bless you. If you just let him. You give me a thousand dollars, I get a thousand people saved. You give me a million dollars. Since the COVID, I said, I've had 11 one million dollar donors. People that don't even know $5 million donors. I don't even know them. Well, I, know the five, I finally know the $5 million donor. And I got a $20 million donor coming. I know it. It's a project. What am I going to do with that? So I don't, you know, I'm just about the father's business. That's it, ladies and gentlemen. That is so simple. Some of you heard me say that. I walked down the mall one time, got $14,000 in cash. From PF Chains to Dillard's <laughs> in cash. I had to get a shopping bag look like a drug dealer. <laughs> I'm not lying. I walked the other side of the mall. I didn't get a dollar. That's the broke side of the mall. I ain't never going to the other side of that mall. That's a true story. <laughs> Showed Kathy. She freaked out. You know what I did? I turned. I said, I'm going back to the mall. I gave it all away. I bought people's Christmas gifts. It was Christmas Eve. It was wonderful. Two days later, I got a check for $100,000 from a person. How many of you want that? Yeah. Hold your hand up. You deserve it. Yeah. Why would God do that for me and not do that for you? The way you're going to do that is with the seeds in your hand. Yeah. I don't make a living. I make a giving. I had him asking me the other day about real estate. Said, what do you invest in? Real estate, stocks, bonds, diamonds. Good investment. But my greatest investment is my giving. One guy said, don't look like you're going to die. Want to sell your life insurance? <laughs> I said, I never thought of it. <laughs> I didn't know you could buy life. You could sell your life insurance. Well, you ever heard of that? I never had. Father, thank you today for the hundredfold return. That's Mark 4 and Mark 10. That's in red, Jesus. And of all places to get it, a church called Faith of the Victory, that would make it happen. Bless each and every person giving. Those that are online, they may want their house paid off. Do it. Lord, my house is paid off. Why can't their house be paid off? My cars are paid off. My car, my truck, that's all paid off. Why can't they do that? Lord, I, I, know, I know you're going to do it for them. If they just believe you, I thank you for it, Lord. For every dollar, Lord, give me a soul. 
Somebody put a thousand dollars in the door. I'll get a, I'll get a thousand people, Lord, by Friday of this week coming. I can do it on social media. I can do it. I ask you that, Lord. But bless the people that gave it with the hundredfold. In Jesus' name, amen and amen. Ushers, go ahead and receive uh, tonight's offering. Then you can bring it to the back and give it to the pilots. They handle all that. Even the IRS can't get over me. Say, he never touches the money. Well, them IRS people or something, that's a trip there. Yeah. Thank you for giving. Partners, hold your hand up if you're a partner with a mission. Thank you. 100% of what you give goes into world evangelism. I'm already taken care of. I'm one of the biggest givers to my ministry. I was the biggest giver until this person gave five million. But it ain't gonna last very long. Thank you. I thought about you when I was in Denmark. I said, my partner sent me here. I was in Italy. My partner sent me here. I was preaching in church, but I'd go to eat lunch and I'd preach in them, <laughs> those restaurants. People started crying. People would freak out. One man told me in a hotel lobby, you got a good heart. I said, no, I have the heart. I have the heart of Christ. Oh, you're religious. I said, no, religious people don't do what I do. I'm born again. Explain that to me. Oh, yes, I can do that. I wasn't waiting to get to the church that night. You should have seen the kids watching when the Holy Ghost was moving. They're about six, seven years old. I said, bring them kids next to me. Follow me, boys. Follow me, girls. I said, you see how God did that? He kind of showed them something. That's the next generation. Stand to your feet right now. I know it's a little late, 7.30, but I'm going to get to bed late anybody else. I got to fly back to New Orleans. I got to do a bunch of television. Then head to California. Head back to New Orleans. Then I got to go to Montana. Edinburgh, no, Edin, Edmonton, Alberta, Canada. Seattle, Washington. Hungry Horse, Montana. <laughs> I'm going, praise God. Fly back, then <sighs> go to the Cape Verde Islands, refuel, go to Nimbia, Africa, refuel, go to Johannesburg, South Africa, go through customs, minister, go to London, preach, 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 turn around, get back. Just remember that. I'll be preaching and Kathy will be sleeping. <laughs> Don't get me. Oh, she preaches to her. I mean, she said, well, I have to stay up on the front pew so I don't fall asleep. That's just as hard. I said, that's right. Would you lift your hands up and just thank the Lord. Pray in the Holy Ghost. Would you do that? Pray in the Holy Ghost with your hands up. Your eyes open. The Bible said, watch and pray. 